The Russian ground forces are advancing to the main cities of Ukraine with huge numbers of tanks and armored vehicles. Do the Ukrainians have enough defensive weapons to prevent from further approach? They have indeed received many anti-tank weapons from USA and other Western nations to battle against the Russian invaders. Are these defensive weapons enough for Ukraine? Apart from Enloy and Javelin, what are the anti-tank guided missiles that the Ukrainian ground forces have? So today, let's take a tour on the list of all the anti-tank guided missiles in use by the Ukrainians today. So firstly, we have the 9K-115 Mattis. Also known as 87 Saxhorn, according to NATO, this is a manned portable tube launch Sakhlos wire guided anti tank guided missile of the Soviet Union. It is considered the Soviet counterpart to the American M47 Dragon ATGM. The missile has a short minimum range of 40 meters and can engage targets moving at up to 60 kilometers per hour. The missile's warhead is a single heat-shaped charge that can penetrate 460 mm of armor. Up next, we have the 9K-115-2 Medis-M. This is also known as AT-13 Saxhorn-2, according to NATO. It was introduced in 1992 and is still now in use by the Ukrainian army. The Medis-M features a larger 127 mm missile with tandem heat warhead and enhanced performance. It has a range of 1.5 km and penetrates 800 mm of rolled homogeneous armor behind explosive reactive armor. The system is designed to augment the combat power of company-level motorized units. Next is the 9M113 Conquers or the AT Spandrel as per NATO reporting name. This anti-tank guided missile entered service in the Soviet Union in 1974 and is still in use by the Ukrainian army. It is one of the most successful anti-tank weapons ever developed by the Soviet Union. It is often compared by Western sources to the American BGM-71 tow or the French Milan. It is capable of reaching targets 4 kilometers away. The Conqueror's heat warhead had superb penetration, nearly twice that of rival tube launch ATGMs in the 1970s. Next, we have the 9K111 Faggot or the 84 Spigot, according to NATO. This is a second generation wire guided anti tank missile system of the Soviet Union, which entered service in 1970 and was in use in many conflicts around the world such as the Soviet-Afghan War, Vietnam War, Iran-Iraq War, War in Donbass, and many more. In semi-automatic guidance system, it was much more accurate than of the previous Soviet ATGMs. The faggot has a hit probability of 80 to 90 percent, opposed to 50 to 60 percent of the previous Soviet ATGMs. Next, we have the 9M14 Malyutka or the 83 Sagar, according to NATO. This is a wire guided anti tank missile system of the Soviet Union which entered service in 1963. It was the first manned portable anti tank guided missile of the Soviet Union and is probably the most widely produced ATGM of all time, with Soviet production peaking at 25,000 missiles a year during the 1960s and 1970s. Although they have been succeeded by more advanced anti tank guided missiles, the Sagar and its variants have seen widespread use in nearly every regional conflict since the 1960s. Up next is the Corsair. This is a Ukrainian-made light portable anti-tank guided missile. The anti-tank guided missile can attack targets up to a range of 2.5 kilometers and has a maximum flight time of 13 seconds at the maximum range. It can destroy low-speed evading targets. The system has RK-3K tandem charge heat warhead with at least 550 mm penetration behind ERA. The system also has high explosive fragmentation RK-30F warhead to attack infantry positions and light armored vehicles. The system has a thermal imager for use in nighttime operation. Up next is the skiff. 
This is again a Ukrainian-made anti-tank guided missile system designed to destroy modern armor targets with combined carried or monolithic armor including explosive reactive armor. Skiffs can attack both stationary and moving targets. It has a maximum range of up to 5 km, and the 152mm RK-2 MK missile can be launched from the skiff. The RK-2 MK stated armor penetration is 1,100mm behind explosive reactive armor, which suggests that it could burn through most tank armor like a hot knife on a cheese. Up next is combat. This is a highly subsonic anti-tank guided missile again of Ukraine origin. The combat principal targets are moving or stationary main battle tanks, fortifications and low-flying helicopters. The missile's tandem hollow-charge warhead is designed to take out explosive reactive armor and composite armor-protected tanks. The semi-automatic laser beam guided missile has a range of 5 km and is capable of penetrating reinforced armor up to 750 mm thick. The next anti-tank guided missile system that the Ukrainian forces have is the main battle tank and light anti-tank weapon or in short the MBT law or the N law. This is a short-range fire and forget anti-tank missile system which was developed by SAP Boffers Dynamics and the Thales Air Defense in collaboration with the British Ministry of Defense. The Enlaw missile is equipped with an armor-piercing warhead capable of destroying heavily armored main battle tanks in a single shot. The missile's effective range is from 20 to 600 meters or up to 400 meters for moving targets. The maximum firing range is 1,000 meters beyond. And now, the most powerful anti-tank guided missile that the Ukrainians have is none other than the FGM-148 Javelin ATGM. This is a man-portable fire-and-forget anti-tank missile manufactured in the United States. The Javelin has been sold to around 20 nations, including Australia, France, the United Kingdom and many more. The Javelin's heat warhead is capable of defeating modern tanks by hitting them from above where their armor is the thinnest, and it is also useful against fortifications in a direct attack flight. It can reach a peak altitude of 150 meters in a top attack mode and 60 meters in direct fire mode. The missile is equipped with imaging infrared seeker and it has 8.4 kg tandem-shaped charge warhead. It is capable of operating at night and in any weather conditions. Well, that's it from the buzz for today. Thank you guys for viewing in. Bye-bye.